Hello, everybody, and welcome along to the Blue Monday podcast. Now in our fifth year, something about Ipswich Town. It's extraordinary times, unprecedented. So the intro has just been completely fabricated. But um, we have um, hastily convened four of us today from the Blue Monday WhatsApp group. And first of all, we'll let him go first because it's the return of Craig Finbow. We haven't seen him doing any um, playoff things or 1981 stuff. How are you, Craig? Oh, I'm fantastic. Yeah, getting out and about, enjoying the, the sunny weather, um, as is everyone, I presume. We're down at South End at the weekend, you know, lounging around on the beach with the close How personal friends. How many people friend. were there um, near your Brightling Sea beach hut, Craig? Oh, to be fair, it wasn't too bad. And my, my beach hut's about 12 away from the mayor of Brightlingsea. So he was outside his beach hut. So I felt OK to be outside mine momentarily. The kids actually went swimming in the sea this week. So, oh, yeah. yeah. Was the mayor wearing his giant gold <laughs> chain? Chains. <laughs> yeah, flavor Just that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that in a bathing suit. Yeah. It's terrible for tan lines. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that will tell you that, Craig, it's great to have you back. Um. Richard, you're the you're the pioneer of the Ipswich goal machine and football shirt Fridays. What are you what are you wearing for us today, sir? So this is um this is a 0405 third kit from that of the Palace away four three last minute pile on Coochie winner game. Lovely and um, yeah. Joe Fairs is back with an excellent story to tell us about an eBay purchase that will no doubt be seen in oh, football yes. shirt Fridays. Um, what did you <laughs> overpay for this time, Joe? <laughs> Oh, the same yeah. colour as his face, isn't it? The shirt that he bought. Oh, wow! Look at Whoa. the tan on Whoa. fairs. He's Greek, isn't he? I, I, I've picked up Mark Fish's match-worn shirt from the QPR debacle. Probably the worst performance from an ITFC player in history. <laughs> but we, did, I, so we were we were discussing this. I sat in the top tier of that stand in the Reebok, and we lost two 0 to Bolton. And I remember thinking at the time. This guy's invincible. He's the best defender I've ever seen. You can't, like, ev- headed everything away, cleared everything when he was playing football. He was a good player. Yeah, I've, he, I remember seeing him once on MTV Cribs. So he must have had a, had a good TV in every it. room. The bar. <laughs> but he was, a, he was obviously a loads of caps of South Africa, brilliant for Bolton. Did he play for Lazio at one point as well, yes. I think? Yeah, yeah, so he was a good player, but he obviously was... Spen, actually, it would have been around that time, or did he go, yeah. did he go later than that? He was obviously shot when he came to us and tried to play, couldn't, and retired straight afterwards. But um, Andy Warren messaged me today saying he spoke to Mark Fish today and told him that I'd bought his shirt. So it was oh, quite exciting. Um, Joe, did we, you know one of our listeners has like got the Marcus Stewart um, virtuoso two-goal shirt. Do you kind of value this one more just for comical reasons? I think there's only a certain number of performances which have gone down in folklore <laughs> in the history of Ipswich Town. And that I think would be iconic, one of them. This one goes on there. Whether it's... if All I need to say to someone is I've got the Mark Fish QPR shirt and yeah. most Ipswich fans know what I mean. Craig, I'd, like to know, I'd like to know who at the time thought we're going to keep hold of this shirt and then who <laughs> subsequently thought, you know what, we'll keep hold of this. Some idiot's going to buy this for 40 notes in the future and uh, you know, we can make a killing. Well, right, I got it, the... There was a certificate of authenticity with it, which shows it was sold in an auction in 2009. So somebody held on to the club. That, sorry, it was sold from a club auction in 2009. So the club held on to it for like three, four years before selling it off and someone picked up a bargain at the auction. I wonder how much they paid for it. What would be the signature Steve Whitten um, shirt, Craig, which if you could, you could have one. <coughs> well, I've, got the, I've obviously not got wearing the signature. Chefky Kookies one at the moment. I've got the signature within reach, but um, not not a, not on a shirt. Um, actually, I was stalking him this week. I was I was looking at his brother's account on Facebook, but don't tell anyone that. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, Richard, um, there's been some contracts been signed, so we do have some stuff to talk about, about football Way. pertaining to um, next season squad. So let's go first with Armando Dobra, and um, this is a new contract. Joe, is this a three-year with a year option? Yeah, three year of a year option. I think after the interest in him in January, which was mostly from Brighton, there was talk of trying to get him tied down to a new contract. And it sounded, it was an announced, oh, it's very close to being signed a number of weeks ago, which I think on his birthday, I think they announced it that they thought they'd got it over the line. And then nothing sort of came of it. And then 
it was announced that we'd taken up the option on his contract, so just effectively to tie him up to the end of next season and while negotiations continued. And obviously they've come to their conclusion and Dobbs is staying at Ipswich. Richard, do you, do you like Dobber? I know no one likes Dobber as much as Joe, but... Um, and, what's his, your... and his dad. <laughs> yeah, fair. Um, what's, not that referee at Accrington. Um, what, what's your view on uh, Dobber, Richard? Um, uh, we, we try, we're playing um, kind of guessing games with a broken transfer market and a completely broken football pyramid potentially next year. So um, guys that you've, that you've bought through that are young and creative um, might be rather useful. Yeah, I, I, th- I guess Joe sees him more as an attacking mid in the centre, don't you, Joe, rather than a, a wide mm. player. But he can do that wide role, can't he? And and to be honest, we're going to talk about other players' contract situations in a bit. I just feel that given the interest in Dobra, given the deal, I think there's probably an incentive now for us to have to play him. I, th- I, I would be surprised if he's given a deal and then we just shove him in the under-23s and bring him on for the leasing dot com trophy if that exists after lockdown. <laughs> and to be honest, I'd be I'd be pretty happy with that. I think there are quite a few of the contracts that we've let expire or not used options where I'd quite like a young player to come through, an Il Mazzuni or a Dobra. He just needs to kind of curtail his more aggressive tendencies that we saw at Accrington. And if he can do that he'll be a some player and he'll probably be the next one off for a million million quid off one and a half million quid to Man City or something stupid, won't he? I guess uh, he's great. Yeah, yeah, he runs with the ball, doesn't he? It's, it's offers, he does actually offer something different to to what we've currently got. You know, him and Il Mazzuni and as as Rich was saying, and Lancaster as well to a certain extent. They just yeah. offer something different to what we didn't have last year. And as Richard again, they're going to hopefully take the places of the guys that we haven't currently renewed the contracts of. I've got no issue at all. Really, really happy that he signed a, a good long term contract as well. Well, imagine imagine a, a five man kind of midfield with one up front with Dobra one side, Lancaster on the other side and Il Mazzuni in the number 10 position with two sitters. I mean, that does for me at League One level. I mean, bloody hell, whatever the league looked like after lockdown, it's not going to be as good as it or as good as it was in inverted commas before us. I'd be happy with that as a starting three. Don't know about you guys. Lovely stuff. Um, Also, uh, signing again. Um, obviously, I think with, with Dobra, it's a general thumbs up. It's kind of a kind of a no-brainer, isn't it? Get him in, and you know, whatever whatever happens happens. Is it? Joe's got two thumbs up. In fact, um, slightly predictably, I have to say on He's on got Dobra. Two thumbs and um, Mark Fisher's shirt. Okay. Guys, we're not going to be able to have the cold skews debate forever. So, should we enjoy it for the fifty seventh time on <laughs> on these podcasts, uh, Joe? Because uh, cold skews has. Um, was it an option or was it an extra year? No, they um, didn't take the option and he signed a new one-year deal, which I presume means that the Pay option cut. would have... Yeah, the option yeah. would have been on more money. We didn't want to take that, so we've negotiated a deal with him. And what's what's your view on this, Joe? Talk to me about um, Skews's role on off the pitch and um, what he actually stands for um, in terms of the... In terms of you know the club. Personally, I've never, I've never been the biggest Skoos fan as a, as a player, but I can, I can, I can see what he brings to the side, and that is generally just sort of solidity in the midfield. But ideally, you'd like to see him in a three rather than a two, because in a two, he does leave his partner a, a lot of work to do. But I, I know it's sort of just the the say of other players. But when you look at these teams on TWTD, every single player from the last five, six years, he's put their best 11, has put Cole Skews in it and says he's a brilliant player. Every manager that's played, had him here has played him week in, week out. And I say, he, he's 30, what is he, 35 now, is he? And he's going to be phased out of the team over. He was being phased out of the team this season, really, wasn't he? From sort of January onwards, he wasn't playing that much. He was dropping out of the team. And I think his role next year, if he maybe 25, 30 games sort of thing to, to try and get out of him. And he's a good influence around the club and him and Chambers have a good sort of partnership as captain and vice captain in the squad. So I've, I've got no real qualms with it. I, I hope I won't be seeing him starting every week personally, but I'm not anti the move. You'd, you'd um, think that if he, if he can be, as you say, Joe, weaned out of the team over a period of time and used more in away matches than home matches, you wouldn't really want to be personally. I don't really want to be seeing him start too many home matches. Um, next season but you know he, he can certainly do a job if you need to 
solidify or you know shut up shop away from home and things like that he's more than capable Craig I'm going to pay him a backhanded compliment here I've, I've always assumed with Skews that um, somebody of perhaps his sort of limited um, scope as a player must be very good tactically to have um, played at the level he's played for so long Do, um, if, if that's the case can you see him being a, a useful voice in terms of um, coaching and, and maybe even um, on the sidelines. Yeah, and what, what you notice, um, so from my lofty perch up above the um, above the tunnel, is that he is, he is more often than not, if not every single time, the player on the pitch that the management team will tell to make changes during matches. You know, he's the one that they'll shout to, he'll take it on board and he'll tell the rest of the team Know, the changes that are being made. So he is the, the funnel, if you like, the, the conduit between the, the, the touchline and, and the team during matches. Um, and as you know, as we've all said, he, he just has that, um, I wouldn't say aura, but he has that standing within the team, doesn't he? That, um, you know, Ooh. people can hang the hat on him. They know what they're getting. And he seems to be a, a well-respected, well-liked uh, guy around the squad. Yeah, on the other side of the coaching thing, sorry. When you, when you go to like under 23s games and the Youth Cup games, in the back of the director's box, there's always a sort of academy mafia of your sort of Grant Williams, um, sort of previously Chris Hogg, Gerard Nash, Adam Atte, Scott Mitchell, all the academy players. And Cole Skews, is, if, if, if there's no first team commitments, he's always in with them watching the games. And so he's obviously keen on the keen on the coach. I think he's done some coaching at Woodbridge Town as well. And um, for the under 15s is there. So he's keen to get into the coaching side. I know both sort of him and Chambers are doing their badges and it does seem as though there'll be some partnership in the future. Richard, um, where do you stand? Do you have any empathy, sympathy for the argument that um, Ipswich fans have had a long time with um, skews in the team and in the main, other than one season that's been mainly, mainly bad? Have you got any... Can you kind of understand where these people are coming from that, um, without being too mean to him, that they're, they're kind of bored of him now? And, um, you know, maybe maybe a new kind of a new face might be required um, rather than his. No, I, to be honest, Ben, I don't. I, um, I was really surprised by the, the it's one of those marmite decisions that appears to have Twitter. Possibly it's, it's more um con and pro on twitter i just don't i i don't get people upset with scoos um because he's not an attacking midfielder he's that isn't who he is what he is is a good sitter and i don't think there's any better in league one yes he's getting on a bit i get that but if there's a view to getting involved in coaching that's a lot of experience that you don't want to just let walk out the door and potentially go somewhere like bristol rovers or bristol city if he wants to go back that way so look i get people are frustrated and bored because it's, it's an old face but i don't see any cons to that deal at all particularly if it is it's an it's not a contract trigger it's a new negotiation and he's on a lesser wage i just don't see the problem as long as to craig's point he's not playing every week because i don't think he a he can do that and b we should be trying to attack teams and you don't need downs and scoops the issue the issue's been is just finding <laughs> Not necessarily being skews, it's just finding who the hell can play with him, isn't it? And that's that's been a problem we've had, and it's a problem that Mick had going back however long. Um, just realistically, it's only been Bishop and Downs have been the only two that have been able to in a four-four-two, haven't they? Yeah. But um, tried a few uh, combinations. But he's also a centre back as well, by the way. You know, the last <laughs> couple of seasons, admittedly, on a cameo basis, he's been a he's been able to convert uh, into back three, hasn't he? Back as, an, as a kind of marauding centre-back, which Sheffield might work for as well. Milton Keynes for four minutes or whatever it was. Uh, well, yeah, true, yeah, true. But he right back, didn't he? To, he used to, to right back in season, season, we yeah, seen him yeah. at Notts County at right back, didn't so, we? And, so needs remember, must and all that. I remember when I was reading, I think it was Joey Barton's book, and he was he was talking about sort of young players coming through and saying... Sort of like if you if you want my shirt off me, you've got you've got to train harder than me, you've got to eat better than me, you've got to work harder, you've you've got to do everything right. And I'm not just going to give you my shirt just because I'm 35. You need to come and get the shirt off me. And I think Cole Skews was in the team when we had our best run of the season at the start of the season when he was playing with Flynn Downs, and that was probably when we were looking good in midfield. And he's been in and out of the team since then. But 
has could could anyone say John Nolan's done enough to sort of sort of relegate excuse to not getting a new contract? The same with Emmy Hughes, the same with Andre Dazelle. Teddy Bishop can't stay fit. Realistically, Cole Skews has got a new contract because he's probably still in our best two or three midfielders. Well, that's a pretty persuasive argument, actually, Joe. We'll leave it on that one. But generally, I think from you three guys, it's it's pretty much a thumbs up with the caveat. You want to see what actual role um, he's going to be fulfilling because you've yeah. it, between you, you've described right back, centre back, central midfield um, in a three coach, academy coach. It could be. <laughs> Any any number of things, so which probably um, speaks to the fact that he's quite a useful guy to keep around. And if we're assuming, um, well, why why would they not have taken the option unless they could get him on a better deal that um, it's less money? Then it sounds pretty sensible. Um, Guion Edwards, this is um, an option. Now, I was really high on Guion Edwards. I remember on the podcast actually saying, "Oh, okay, this is the one guy that after two or three games did that trick against." Blackburn and obviously scored didn't he and I was thinking this is the one guy stick him in that position now leave him there don't 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 move him around um and he's the one guy that will go will go up in value um Rich where where do, where are you seeing Guion Edwards and um I was being facetious when I said stick him there don't move him and um he's also never gone in that inverted left left winger or left of a four-two-three-one or a four-three-three, cutting inside, which we actually heard might even even be his best position. Where where are you standing on Guion Edwards now? I was I was going to say actually, it's, it's it's an interesting point you make about his his flexibility because I, I think that's a factor for it. Albeit as you say, we've not played him too much on the left hand side. I think a lot of people forget that he scored quite a few goals in the crap relegation season in the championship, um, and 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 did quite a lot of good stuff that just gets forgotten because that season would just such a nightmare. Um, look, I've got no problem with you, and he's got a similar kind of trait to Dobra that he needs to cut out the stupid yellow cards. Um, but again, what's the risk in uh, this? Is a contract trigger, isn't it? This is it's an extension. You know, I just I have no issue with it. And um, and pace is something we lack. He's got pace. If he scores a few more goals and leave one level, then he'll be he'll be decent. So yeah, no controversy in that one for me. Joe, I just I quickly before you start, um, I need to say yes, it's an extender because someone normally says it at that point. But Joe on on Guion, kind of another no-brainer. Yeah, for me, he's I say you don't he he must have started twenty odd games this season, and I think to to do that and then to not get your contract renewed, there's something a bit wrong there. And he's not had a good run in his best position. He's played right back, right wing back, left wing back, all over the place. And I don't think he's let us down this season as well. I think he's he's put a shift in wherever he's played and he's sort of worked hard. And I think he's defensively sort of even done quite well as a right back. He's really worked on his game there. So I think he deserves a good opportunity in sort of the, sort of a, in, in his rightful position, sort of up the pitch and Hopefully, with Kane Vincent Young back, he'll get that next year. Because as much as we all want to see Armando Dobra do well, I think we've probably got a little bit more faith that Guion Edwards is going to contribute more sort of goals and assist-wise if, if he's the one that gets a run in the team next season. And you'll Craig, get a 20-man brawl what, as well. I was going to say, he'll, he'll also cut a few people in half, won't he? <laughs> Craig, what does it say about our recruitment going forward if in, I won't say January, because that might not be halfway through next season, if... After game number 23 of next season, if there's 46 games, um, Guion Edwards is starting um, at right wing back for town. Um, we do, just don't want to see him there, do we? Well, no. Um, but then, as as Joe said, if, if Vincent Young's back, then hopefully he'll be playing that position in any case. Um, and as Rich said, it's he's useful to keep around. You were saying that about skews. He's just plays. He's played in three or four different positions. He just helps us out in that respect in terms of his squad placing. It's probably the reason why Danny Rowe hasn't got a extension is because you know, he does probably doesn't have that flexibility and can play in as many positions as, as Edwards can. Um I so I think he's done he probably did himself a lot of favours last year in the way that he, he went about his business covering for the various positions that he had to play and just I say just on a, in a, in what's going to be a vastly reduced size squad. You know, we're going to need a few players of that type, aren't we, just to help us out? Um, you just mentioned Danny Rowe. Um, so, Joe, uh, Danny Rowe, um, I always listen to Dave 
Dave's very good at um, seeing a player play once and making a judgment. And Dave always said he liked him. Um, and I, I kind of trust Dave. Um, but hasn't hasn't happened, has it? He's, he's always a player that when he plays, he, he does seem to make things happen. I, I've always thought that from when I first saw him all the way through. And But he's never really had the trust of a manager. And whether that's McCarthy, whether that's Hurst, whether that was Lambert as well. He's, he's sort of come in, had a couple of games. He's had a little bit here and there. And then... He's sort of been sent out on loan. It happened last year. Lambert brought him on a couple of games. I thought, oh, maybe he's going to make an impact. But then he's out on loan again. And he's he's been here, what, three and a half years without really doing anything. He's probably a little bit unfortunate he had the injury over Christmas. And that sort of ruled him out for the second half of the season because he was making an impact. But ultimately, he got one goal in three and a half years, a couple of assists. He's never had, he's never had a run of games, has he? But then, as we were, as we were saying about you know, Skew's still potentially being in the top two or three central midfielders, you can probably name three or four or five players that you'd play in that attacking midfield role before you'd start even thinking about Danny Rowe, I'd have thought. Rich, we do this though, don't we? I think I think it's part of being an Ipswich fan that it's been uh, a trial for so long that when we see a guy who's not in the team, um, we kind of build them up more in hope than expectation, don't we? I think yeah. that's happened with Danny Rowe. Yeah, I think that's fair. And, and the trouble is, you, every now and then you get a glimpse, don't you, of what Danny Rowe can do. The Burton game, the, the Burton first day of the started season. Started that one, didn't he? Started that one and in a 4-4-2. And, he, and it, it looked, he was running with pace and purpose, I think. Um, certainly contributed some decent chances in that one. But, you know, and Rochdale, he, he won the game there by scoring a kind of scuffy little goal, didn't he? But, but you, you see moments and you think, yeah, this is it. And then he goes out injured or gets dropped and you kind of because he's not there you think oh get him back in the team and he'll be different and yeah he just has he just doesn't do it consistently he's also got a bit of a knack of getting injured every now and then which if you're going to trim down the squad you need people who are going to play 30 odd games a season I'm not sure he's that the other thing Ipswich Town fans like apart from a Dutch signing is a player from the lower leagues coming through and that was the hope he was, he'd be the next John Walters or Matt Holland you know that's exalted <laughs> company Keep from more, yeah, exactly. Right. Or in that camp, isn't he? But yeah, I, I, I have no dis, d- dispute with this decision. And also, along with Roberts and Keane, it isn't like that's it. There's the potential for us to open it up and have a look, isn't there? If things how things play out in the next few months, he might still get offered something. Just before our Twitter timeline fills up, I'm aware that Kiefer Moore currently plays at a higher level than Ipswich and has scored two stupid back heels this season. Welsh well, international Ben, how dare you? It, it was and we'll a joke. Be going to the <laughs> um, right, Jordan Roberts. Um, this was Paul Hurst's, and I remember this at the time. Oh, it's an. But he say it's an experiment. It's a project or something. Um, it's Joe Barkerstein. I, I, I think Paul Hurst. We can't like make Jordan a striker, Roberts, out of don't you, Joe? I wouldn't say I wouldn't say I'm a massive fan, but I thought when he came in, when Lambert was appointed last year and he wanted to play this 4-3-3 which he was set on doing and we didn't really have a target man to play he put Roberts up there and whilst you could see that Roberts was lacking the quality needed to be to play that role in the championship I thought he worked hard and actually he did okay and I thought he I thought he did enough in that spell and then he went off on loan for the second half of the season and I think he did okay there that this year it seems strange that Lambert was so wedded to 4-3-3 last year, but he was saying, we don't have any wide players, we don't have any forwards, so I can't play it. And I thought, well, we gave Roberts a go in the championship, and I'm sure I'm sure he's good enough for League One from what I've seen. And it looked like that when he went to Gillingham and he played in the EFL Trophy games and did okay in those. And I know, I think I, I, the fact he didn't get, I think he had one minute of league football this season. So the fact he got that and was sent to Gillingham, he was never going to get a new deal, but... I think he could have had a look in this year, but I'm not too bothered. Craig, I'm I'm going to lose you early into this question, but don't worry, I will get you back. Um, I heard an interview with Lee Johnson, and um, he kind of pointed out he's like he like he like gave up this checklist for what he wanted out of a championship team, not one player out of a team, and he said, "Have I got my technicality? Have I got my experience? Have I got my speed? And have I got my?" physicality and I kind of you know I kind of think of Jordan Roberts in the like the that Joe was saying his role was the physicality um if he's out um does the squad now lack that physicality um in terms of having all those ingredients in a team yeah in that definitely. end of the pitch 
Yes, definitely. Yeah, definitely. I don't, I don't know if we'll talk about it later about, you know, areas that we'd look to um, look to improve on. But I just think we need a lump of sun description up front. And, you know, who can play with Norwood, who can play with Jackson, who can play in the middle of a three if needed. We just need some sort of presence up front because, you know, Norwood does try and put himself about a bit, but he's just not big, big enough or physical, physically suited enough for that role. Um, whereas, you know, as we've seen from this season, the amount of teams that we come up against who've got a big battering ram, it may not look pretty, but it's certainly effective in this league. And I would be amazed if we don't get someone of that ilk in. And I was, I was going to talk about it is that, you know, these boys now that are out of contract, their agents are going to earn some money this summer because there's so many players out of contract, you know, hundreds and hundreds of players out of contract that will be looking for you know, spaces in squads which are going to be reduced as it is. So in that respect, I would hope that we would be a uh, a more attractive prospect to to players who are out of contract and it may we've be got, easier to... We've got to... such a big squad already though, haven't we? That's the issue. Yeah, yeah, but not in, not for that type of player we haven't. Mm. We? That is the, that, you know, that's the glaring omission in our team as far as I can see. The big hole is that, that big lump up front. Um, speaking of big guys up front, um, not a typical big guy, but Richard... Um, we can do the um, we've done the Cole Skews debate. Let's do the Will Keane uh, conversation now because it's just another one of those. Uh, well, falls into I think the same points that you discuss when you discuss Andre Dezel of a player who you can see has got lots of quality. Um, you've never really seen him do it, and obviously you've got the injury angle with um, with Will Keane, and uh, he may be the one that. Um, you might actually see back train with us and then, you know, there's an actual chance of, of coming back. But Will Keane, um, no longer, uh, Richard. Yeah, and, and, and this one I can I can see the logic and I can understand it. And Mullet's not going to be not really popular with Mullet with this one. But I, to me, the, the issue with Keane is, 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 as you mentioned, I think there's a good chance he's among the higher owners. I don't know whether Joe knows this, but I would assume that the deal that he signed would put him up up and amongst it, not not the highest earner, but there or thereabouts because of where he's come from and his pedigree. I just think you just don't see enough of him. And at League One level, if you're up front, you've got to be scoring goals or you've got to be making goals. He just doesn't really, it's not much of a presence, but you can see, and frustratingly, he's, he's got the ability. I'm trying to, was it Accrington at home, I think it was, where, he kind of withdrew a little bit and played behind the strikers and, and contributed a little bit more there. But it just feels like a luxury player, Ben, in League One. And, and I don't think we're in the world of luxury players anymore. Joe, I'm thinking of the Wigan away performance before he got hurt and the great goal at Exeter. Coventry away this season. Yeah. where But he's a, he's a, I think he's one of the players that has probably suffered most from the complete lack of identity we've got as a football team in that no one knows what style we're trying to play, what is our preferred shape, what formation. And and if it is going to end up as a flat 4-4-2 or a 3-5-2, then he's not the player for it. But if it is going to be a 4-3-3 or a 4-2-3-1 and he is going to be able to play in that role as a 10 who can push on and that, then he's, he's a very good player. And I think, I, I think we've, I think we've wasted him this year by just not, not settling on any, any type of play, but, what is oh, he, Joe? Though, what is yeah. it? What is his? What if you to, to describe him in three words or four words? What I've, is he? Because I don't think he's a number ten. With, he's without not an out the, the, um, he? without sort of comparing him to these players, but I think it's in the early years of the Premier League when you sort of see the sort of Eric Cantona, Teddy Sheringham role as in okay. the teams that are four four two, and he's the one that will just drop off it and sit sit in that hole behind it, try and get on the ball and try and play. As, as Rich said, he just. And appreciate, you know, he's been in that team and in different formations, but he just needs to, he just hasn't got the numbers, has he? He hasn't got the assists or the goals to warrant it as yet, you know, in terms of a new contract. I'll be intrigued to know if he doesn't sign, if he doesn't sign, re-sign for us, I'll be intrigued to know where he does end up. I've, I've, any... heard, that, I've heard that he was on a trigger of sort of a number of appearances that was going to trigger a new contract for him. So it wasn't so much an option. It was a appearance trigger. So has this curtailed season had any effect on well it obviously has had an effect on that but we'll see he's from the um, northwest isn't he ben so I yeah he'll either end up, up, up there, isn't Blackpool there? who love yeah. a freebie 
Or he's a big, he's a, he is, you know, he's come yeah, through the United even, Academy, isn't he? Fleetwood even, was... even if you're a championship club and you can write a contract yeah. that's weighted on, you know, appearances and a nice bonus at the yeah. end of the year, it's, it's kind of like, come and sit on our, come and sit on our bench and see what you can do after 75 minutes for Wigan or, you know, Blackpool or whoever up there. Craig, it's not going to be another McGoldrick. Um, we, we can get the tune out of him, but then off he goes and somebody else does, is it? Yeah, very possibly. Yeah, he could just be one of those players. Yeah, a bit like Andre Dezel that it'd look a hell of a lot better in a in a better team, possibly in a higher division. Yeah, we may find that he disappears and turns up at, I don't know, Preston or somewhere like that up in the northwest. You know, he's got plenty of clubs to choose from. He could throw a hanky over about two dozen. Um Back fan? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just that. a just a better functioning team I think would suit him. Oh, we'll get functionality under Tony well, Mowbray or Alex Neal, I'll yeah, guarantee. Don't guarantee either of those um joe i sent you a message this morning it said who is ross crane discuss um I, I've, 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 I've seen him play a couple of times but he he was at berry town he he was previously in the sudbury academy but the sudbury academy is effectively our reserve academy if that makes sense in that the guys that don't get scholarships at ipswich they they go in at sudbury and have scholarships there and we do a lot of coaching and stuff like that so I've, se- I've seen him play for the under 18s two or three times and I think he's played for I think he played for Colchester on a long trial before then and when I went to Molden in pre-season he was playing for the under 23s then so he's someone you, you get these players sometimes that just hang about on the fringes of the academy but you're, you're never quite sure whether they're signed on or whether they are on long trials or or what the reasoning is there but I saw him playing. He was at Berry Town for most or for all of this season, and by all accounts, has done quite well there. When I've seen him, he's been a left-footed winger playing on the right-hand side, sort of cutting in, sort of a nice, nice left foot on him, decent physicality. But as it sounds like at Berry, he's sort of played all up the left-hand side, left back, left, left mid, left wing. So I'd imagine he's, he's going to be a player that's going to come into the under 23s he's not he's not a first team p- player for that side he's going to come in and try and challenge in the 23s in the first instance did you hear that craig he's not six feet two 15 stone and a forward no no but th- there was a good interview with adam lee actually on those were the days i was reading it this afternoon Perfect. um <laughs> well yeah I, I don't know if he's uh if he's available no but i mean he adam lee was talking about um about this guy about crane saying you know just giving a really good interview of his background and, and what he can and can't do um, and actually, Brightlingsea see Regent. They had a player that went to Millwall, similar sort of age, I think he was, in a, in a similar similar position. I think he was a, he was a winger as well, and he went to Millwall to play in their reserves. Um, I think Steve Morrison, no, Rob Harvey, Harvey, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, Rob Harvey. Yeah, I think he's at Leiston now, actually. Um, that guy was Tim Cahill. Nice. No, <laughs> yeah. Eddie, 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 Eddie Sheringham. Eddie well, Sheringham. He's gone back, yeah, he's gone back he, round he, in a circle. He's one that had been on trial at Ipswich as well. That Rob Harvey at Brighton Sea, but um. I think Neil Harris again with Millwall was looking at this Ross Crane before he before he lost his job at Millwall or moved from Millwall to Cardiff, whichever way round that went. That and then obviously when he left, the interest ended there. So he's someone that's obviously sort of caught the eyes of the right people. Okay, so that is um, just about the size of it. If you want to get your comments in on any of those players, Dobra extended, Skew's new one year, Edwards option. Roberts out, Rowe out, Keane out. And um, honestly, on the Blue Monday team, um, we let Joe deal with um, the academy side. So um, take his opinion as, as gospel on Crane and we'll, we'll, the likely role that we'll see um, next year. And that just shows the wonderful diversity of knowledge we have on this podcast platform. You can subscribe um, on YouTube and um, download all our podcasts and find us all on Twitter. Right, let's try and get this right. Here's where we are. You can go first on this, Richard. Um, EFL statement on Thursday. Two options. One, curtail the season. Two, play on. If you're voting to curtail the season, there will be playoffs, there will be promotions and relegations and the league table we decided on unweighted points per game. If the playoffs can't happen, we're going to have another chat, said the, <laughs> said the EFL. Hopefully, I've got all of that right, having studied that um, that statement. Um, where... uh, what, what were the options again? <laughs> <laughs> Always the same, Joe. In three Always words. Same. In three words. <laughs> Always the same. You put eczema. <laughs> um, Richard, uh, without using the words, 
self-interest and ramped up and um, phase two and soft training. No. Um, well, how do you see Ipswich voting? Joey Barton on the football show um, said today that the owners have got five days, which would take us to Monday from Thursday's announcement. Um, I'm sure Mr. Pilly has been on loan to miss on the phone to Mr. Evans, who's been on the phone to Mr. McCantony, who's been on the phone to Mr. Stewart at Rotherham. Joey Barton in, <laughs> comically said, though, um, Rotherham have won the lottery. If they get second, they've got six of the top ten to play. Um, so, um, stir in the pot a little bit. Um, what do you do if you're Marcus Evans? Uh, which way do you vote? And what is the right thing to happen for the league? Richard? If it, it sounds like the costs involved for Ipswich are more severe if the season ends without a finishing off. And, and, and so that steers it. And I think possibly this, the cabal of the, the, the kind of teams just outside the auto spots and the playoff spots was a bit desperate, wasn't it? But I think it, there was part of, um, it's going to cost us too much. And also we want to keep the faint hope alive. So I can't see Evans voting anything other than to continue to play on. But I think it's a vote for more, uncertainty and and more concern and i think a lot of if if it's a i it'll be a another brexit won't it i think it'll be a one what's the majority is it one team that's, that's the yeah, difference so 12 12, 12, 12 yeah. beating 11 would be so so fun. who's the one who's the one who's going to put them over the top because Tranmere now are, are saying they want to continue to play on because they just come into a good run of form and were pushing themselves away from south end and, and bolton and potentially to survival uh, the, th- the trouble I have is the vote and the answer doesn't solve anything because the Premier League can't figure out coming back to play with Project Restart. How the hell is League One going to be able to cope with it? And I just think teams are going to end up having, if that happens, the likes of Accrington, the, the smaller teams in the division, Wimbledon, might end up having to forfeit and then we'll have all kinds of legal cases and Integrity. claims. And, oh, it's just silly. I just, I'm just a bit confused why I'm not for forfeiting the season or um declaring the season null and void for a selfish reason because i've added about 10 grounds to my 92 and if they get voided then i'll have to go back to some real crap holes so i just don't want to do that but why can't we just wait a little bit longer i don't see why there's a big rush does anyone know why we're in such a hurry to it's just contracts trip? isn't it yes yeah, yeah, with the contract just... running out, yeah. isn't it? it's got to be finished by the end of June really and potentially roll into July but yeah you've got about a month to play with after June the June the 30th if I have this conversation a lot Rich I've been doing uh, videos on my YouTube channel yeah your stuff with Kieran's yeah really interesting yeah and people ask the same question let's just mothball it and stop but unfortunately with anything to do with the economy you can't just stop Um, you know everyone there's always going to be one interest along the line that will then not be able to play, pay those bills because you've you've stopped. And um, for for want of a useless phrase, it is what it is. But um, Joe, where do you where do you stand on this? Are you aligned with Richard there? I, I personally think the best outcome is to is to finish the season, is to play the games and finish the season. But I don't see that how that happens without a large amount of financial help from the Premier League. But not just that. The, the problem with that is you've got clubs in this league that are so small that they, they don't, they've got no interest in that happening. So it's very difficult to force clubs. Well, also, so, Joe, why would Rotherham or Coventry have any interest in playing on as well when they can stop it now and they're promoted? Because I, 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 think, that's where the, I think that's where it does come down to sport and integrity there. But I'm, I'm talking the clubs that, there's clubs like Accrington that, basically just put their whole club on furlough and they're happy to leave their club on furlough until and he's January. happy to sell his um stadium to a supporters group as well to yeah to prop it up while they're while they're there he's proper in um he's back dri- down the hatches mode it's isn't not, he it's not but aberdeen it's it, Inverness, it, isn't it he's, he's driven to Inver- aberdeen with uh, no shoes on any feet. <laughs> it's just i think obviously the, the championship is a mess when you look at the finance of the championship but i think league one is a sort of key division because in league one you've got clubs that see themselves as top end championship clubs bottom end premier league clubs and then you've got clubs that are really no bigger than non-league clubs up there and sort of without sort of disrespecting them, but you sort of your Accringtons, your Burtons, they have about 3,000 fans that go to their games. Their players earn a pittance, which is covered by the furlough scheme. And, and that's going like to drop at the end of the season, Joe, as well. Yeah, but like I say, just from a personal perspective, I, I'm a, 
in a building company, we're furloughed because it not that it suits us, but we can't get enough work in to cover ourselves. My friend, my best mate works for a different building company. They're having to force people to come to work because it costs them one point two million pound a month just to stand still. So this is where we are in this league. Ipswich are the team that are spending hundreds of thousands of pounds a month just to stand still. Where Accrington are the team that are saying, well, actually, it suits us to not go back because we can't make the money that we're going to make. So it's be- better to be in this position. And Joe, neither of those two positions are wrong, are they? No, and, and people keep going on about self-interest, but every every single club is showing self-interest from the bottom yeah, that's of the league to the top now. of the how, league. How can you vote from anything other than self-interest? Yeah, and I, I don't see any way that the vote goes to continue the season unless the Premier League or the FA or the PFA say, look, we're going to give every club a million pounds to cover yourselves to the end of the season because we want to get it done. That isn't, that isn't going to happen. There's not a spare £23 no to million pound kicking around and they don't care. So it is no. going to be curtailed next week and here we are league one for next season and when does league one even begin That's the so, thing. it's not going to be a i don't think it'll be that close to vote to be honest you know as we said the top two will vote to end the bottom two will vote to end you haven't got to find that many in between there are enough small clubs just sitting in mid table who it doesn't affect they'll be more than happy to, to and why would the season. fleetwood wickham oxford and portsmouth it's sort of yeah, why, why chance you, of dropping out vote? the playoffs. You, you can yeah, either, that's, yeah, you've got a small chance of getting into the top two, but yeah. you're guaranteed a playoff chance of playoff being in the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, a three game shot for promotion or a nine game shot for promotion. I like a three game shot um in that in that um instinct. So Craig, you, you can see uh, a landslide here then. Well, I don't have to be a landslide. I can see Steve Evans finishing above Paul Lambert in the in the division. <laughs> I was um, reading the thing on Steve Evans Boston United this morning. That's a bit murky, isn't it? Yeah, just murky. a little bit, yeah. Murky. <laughs> Illegal, I think, is a word you're looking for. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> um, I think you'd have got, I, I said the other day, I think you'll get decent odds at the beginning of the season to have none of Sunderland, Peterborough or Ipswich in the top six of this division in middle of August last year. But, you know, it, it, we're not, it doesn't affect us as much. You know, we're down in 11th. Um, but you can see why Peterborough are annoyed. You can see why Sunderland are annoyed. They're on the edges of it. Um, but, you know, there's just so many, as Joe said, there's so many diversely sized clubs in this division. It's it's affected this division more than it will affect the championship if it went to a vote. And obviously the League Two clubs are of a similar sort of size. They've all voted to, to end it, whereas you know, we've probably got two thirds of a smaller persuasion and then you know, a third that are larger, which is why there's going to be that discrepancy. But I don't think it will be close at the end. Let's play this out then, guys. So by Monday, we assume that Logically, the interests of most league clubs are to curtail. We're going to book up Fleetwood versus um, Wickham and Oxford versus, Portsmouth. help me, Pompey. Um, we're going to do that, I don't know, at the end of July or something, somewhere clean and sanitised and they can get ready for that. Um, once that news goes through, Richard, what is on Paul Lambert and Marcus Evans things to do list resign they want to hope that Portsmouth go up um I've been joking aside if I mean, we were t- I was talking about this on a on a um I was, I was gonna say inferior that's harsh on um <laughs> <laughs> I was on the Kings of Anglia lunchtime Q&A thingy yes on Thursday and and a question I put to the panel was and you guys can answer this is if we did up being 11th in the real league league table, having seen the season through in a world without COVID, Lambert will be gone, wouldn't he? He, he would be gone. There's no way that you miss out in the playoffs by that far and keep your job. Presumably the contract that he signed, the ridiculous, stupid five-year contract or four-year contract extension, whatever it was, has breaks in it, performance related. Um, so Lambert's got to find a way to explain to Marcus Evans how it's not going to be the same next time around whenever that is um if i'm marcus evans i'm trying to find a way to incentivize season ticket holders to let the club keep their season ticket refunds academy donations or what have you or i don't know free shirts or something because that's a big hit and i don't think any other club apart from possibly sunderland will face that risk um that ten thousand odd season ticket holders getting i don't know 50 quid each is it something like that Probably 100, isn't it? Yeah. So that's a big gap. 
in the budget that wasn't expected to be there. Um, yeah, it's it's different. It's difficult. Yeah, it really and then is. it's behind closed do- doors at the start of next season, most exactly likely right. as well. So you've yeah. then got that on the season tickets. Well, and you, did, Joe, you you you'd look at. Um, I'm sure the government will come out with something very vague to the effect of fans will be allowed back in grounds when it's safe. It'll be something that vague, wouldn't it? But would you be totally surprised to see them say, look, 2020, 2021, that season's going to be behind closed doors. And and then you have the then you have the question of um, you know, where does that even leave League One? You've been talking about AFC Wimbledon and Burton and and Accrington and if they can't play nine games behind closed doors, how can they play 46 or 52 if we get this crazy no relegation thing? But I don't think we're going to get that. Where's that going to leave it, Joe? Well, I think there is, there's, like I said, without sort of being political on this, there is a talk from the government that the test and trace and track scheme is going to be in in June the 1st. And realistically, if there's no vaccine, we're going to, everyone's going to have to get back to their normal life at some, or not everyone, the majority of the population is going to need to get back to their normal life. And the football stadiums will reopen at some point, whether that's August, September, October, December, January, we don't know, but they are going to need to open. But that doesn't mean that 100% of season tickets are going to continue to go. There's going to be a lot of people in that in that list that do not want to go into big crowds because they are have pre-existing health conditions and um, don't feel they've had it, don't feel safe going into it. So even if, even if the stadiums do open in August, September, until there's a vaccine in place, there is going to be... A, p- a potential large drop off of season tickets of people that, that currently go, whether they live with someone, may, whether their wife falls pregnant during the season, they want to stop going because she needs to be shielded from it. And they don't think going to stand in two, 3000 people is a responsible thing to do. So it's going to have knock on effects on that, on that side of things. But I say, what do you do is it's, it's we're, we're, we're fortunate in a way that we've got such a big stadium that there is potential. If there is, if there's any possibility of, <laughs> Well, if you know, but if there's potential of watching the games socially distanced, as in sort of in blocks of family well, blocks, Joe, I've said as well. Them and what about the it? golden ticket as well? Surely, if I'm Leeds United and Championships playing on, I'm charging a thousand quid a hospitality ticket for behind the glass doors for the game that gets them promoted because they'll make an absolute killing. Do you know what I mean? I think I think you will see the hospitality boxes open before you see people sat two two seats apart or or what have you i'll, um, I'll be all right then <laughs> <laughs> there you go um craig surely 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 all of that taken into account a club with more fans and a wealthier owner than nigh on everyone else in the division surely it's going to be worse for at least two-thirds of the division than ipswich next season is there any advantage to this <laughs> Well, advantage, it's all relative. I, I would say that we should, well, we should have been in a better position this season <clears throat> from a financial perspective. So we should be in a better position next season. And, you know, Evans gets his um, gets his brick bats, you know, gets them from me. But I think this could be an occasion whereby we're thankful that Marcus Evans, yeah, quite, is in charge because... You know, he does pay the wages and he'll continue to pay the wages regardless of if there's zero people in the stadium or 25,000 people in the stadium. He covers that. He covers that wage bill, doesn't he? Whereas two thirds of the clubs in this division, it probably doesn't happen for. Um, I don't think we'll be going to watch any football in the flesh until next year. Um, It's all, you know, as Joe says, it's all entirely linked to vaccines and tests and bits and pieces like that. But can anybody realistically see mass gatherings of any description before January? I can't. Um, I think we've got this as a question here, Rich. Um, FPL Tractor, assuming the clubs vote to curtail the season because they can't afford to play games under COVID, does that imply no League One until the new year, assuming the current government um, estimates are broadly accurate? This is where we get the real mess because um, Premier League are going to want to start next season championship we're going to want to start next season because of proximity to the premier league um is there even a scenario where you can't get enough clubs for league one to even start i think this is the risk that's been there throughout isn't it that the lines get redrawn don't they 
Um, I was, I was going to ask you, Ben, I'd, your chats with Kieran is, is there any doubts as to whether some championship teams might not make it out of this and potentially you get the teams promoted out of League One in however the League One is resolved and then three or four of them drop away because of FFP or other things and then teams, I guess it won't be us, will it? It'll be on a league basis. But well, if you're looking for badly run clubs that are um, a potential financial time bomb, Rich, you'll find more of them in the championship than you say, will. I can think in, of at least two league, off the top of my head straight yeah, away. Yeah, you will in League One. And then, I mean, imagine the Doomsday Sheffield Wednesday scenario. Imagine EFL are sat on, they know they're going to give them a 15 point deduction, but just haven't, they just haven't kind of phoned them up to dump them yet. And well, um, well Barnsley have said they'll sue, haven't, haven't yep, they? Um, if, if Barnsley want good. the TV money made up if the FFP, um, uh, look, and we, we must say Sheffield Wednesday and Derby haven't been found guilty yet, but Birmingham got off the hook and then the EFL appealed against Birmingham being let off the hook. So um, for want of a better phrase, Rick Parry has got a hard on for clubs um, who are not running well. So, yeah, Rich, there's every chance that even further up the line. But, of course, the issue is that um, you've got a 4.65 million solidarity payment and 3.45 million quid. Don't get me started again. Another three, then 35 million quid. The parachutes and, you know, there's still enough money to probably get started. for. Um, uh, but that obviously doesn't account for clubs that are in massive horrible holes and now losing lots and lots of revenue i I do i do think the um sort of future of the championship is the one that is the biggest issue at the moment is it with regards to the amount of debt some of those clubs run at and that they aren't going to be able to cope with that and whilst evans like i say i know he's got his critics but he is like craig saying he pays away at the end of every month we don't run at ridiculous losses maybe this will see us sort of push back into if we if if I've we can get for up. that for years, Joe, I've hoped for sort of, that. The, sort of oh, we we stay into... on the FFP and it will yeah. write itself in the end. I used to think the same thing about Arsenal under Wenger. I think oh, in the end, it will fall away and they're the ones doing it properly and they'll they'll get back up. So there'll um, be one guy saying I told you so, and it'll be Simon Clegg, who basically <laughs> had to front it up, didn't he, for about three years when we were all saying, "Where's the money?" Um, but, yeah. but to the to the original question, I think was it, uh, and I think Craig's mentioned it already, big stadium, um, opening up stadiums, all that kind of stuff, that won't be in this year. I'm I'm almost certain any football will be behind closed doors this year and next year. I wouldn't be surprised if season starts in January is what I'd guess, and I wouldn't be surprised if we're not there for that either. And what the little uh, divisions look like? I think the know. season's got to start earlier, but it's behind closed doors. I just yeah. can't, you can't leave it till January to start the season okay. because all these players have got to be paid for six months. Just because the small teams at the bottom of the league want to mothball until then, the government aren't going to let businesses furlough for that long, and that's the only thing keeping the wall from their doors. October if they want to play is their... where the furlough's going up to at the moment. Joe. Yeah, if they, that, if they want to play their youth teams and pay them two hundred pound a week, fine, but. That's, that's what they're going well, to Well, that's going to happen. Joe, that's going to happen. If they can't yeah. afford nine games and they've got to get through 46, then, yeah, talk about talk about your integrity. You're going to have some... Um, uh, do you remember AFC Wimbledon's last last season when it was virtually... Or, as Wimbledon before they became MK Dons and it yeah. was you know, bottom of the league by a mile and... Well, and we saw the Bolton yeah. example. You'll see a lot of teams like right. Bolton's. A lot of, you'll see a lot of lineups like like Bolton's. I think if yeah. if it comes to that, but just and, to, and, purely to fulfil their fixtures. I re- as Joe says, I reckon if you put gun to my head, we'll start. We'll start in the autumn. Some at some point behind closed doors. But you know, Christ knows what the teams will look like. And I don't mean to sound particularly harsh and uncaring for other clubs, but ultimately, if the league is going to have itself shuffled around to get itself into its sort of rightful place of the teams that have got the sort of resources to pay money and I don't just mean from an owner I mean from big fan bases that will put money to the club then there's going to be a tough couple of years for the teams that drop down to their natural position while the other teams rise to theirs yeah and um, that just kind of speaks to the realities of a capitalist society doesn't it we've had the leads on tv argument before but if I'm if I'm I've said before if I'm the sky head honcho and I've got advertisers I'm putting I'm putting leads onto TV and Nottingham Forest and Sheffield Wednesday and like you say Joe in a league one context that's Ipswich Pompey if they don't go up Sunderland um 
who are we going to get down? We're not going to get any particularly big clubs down, Chelten, are we? Chelten, 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 Luton, and Barnsley, isn't it? Yeah, Chelton, Luton and, and Barnsley. Um, who's coming up? Swindon, Slugs, um, <laughs> Crew. Crew, is it? And, oh, Chel- uh, Chelton and maybe Exeter. Yeah, so oh, if we're you, relying mate. on yeah, yeah. TV um, in the same way, the you know, the Premier League model obviously relies on TV, doesn't it, for its 90% of its income then? Yeah. Um, anyway, let's try and get another question out of this. Um, Mikey Penty Smith, Craig, the millennial, the avocado munching millennial. Tangine cookie. <laughs> <laughs> He's just off to listen to some indie music with no guts, I think, isn't he? I'm not uh, sure I've ever heard the word tagine said with so much aggression. <laughs> <laughs> you eat your tagine Hi, with Mikey. your hands. Um, the Boomennial question for Craig: Who should replace Ken Bruce as the host of Popmaster when he moves into retirement? What What is this? Is this a private joke? Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, Mikey gives me a lot of shit because <laughs> I uh, I have twice he stops for Popmaster. I stop for Popmaster every day. Yeah, as do a vast you know swathe of the population, and I note down my scores and I send it to my mates, and they send me the, their scores as well. Okay, are you ready for this, Craig? Three and ten. You ready? Oh, is it the the last 25 years? Do you want it to be in the last 25 years? No. Oh, okay. Okay, ready? Three and ten. Human League. Uh, Don't you want me, Mirror Man, Louise? Okay, he's good at he's good at Popmaster. There you go. I like Dare. Or is that the name of an album? That's the album, yeah. And I very much like Electric Dreams, which is not Human League. It's Phil Oakey on his own. But Giorgio Giorgio Moroder. Moroder. Yeah, Yeah, did did lots of fun songs there i've had to play a couple of them as what well. you'll find is you're you're very unlikely to get any mail delivered between half past 10 and about 10 to 11 in the morning because the entire oh. workforce at the royal mail is listening to a pop logging on, logging on to the ken bruce facebook page <laughs> yeah. always gets a always chucking, gets a chucking mail into the nearest hedge Joe, have you made any good uploads to your tiktok recently just to bring the um, the younger crew back <laughs> yeah. that's that the only TikTok sick, we've, we've ever done yeah um, Joe, this is from Tim, goalkeeper. Would the panel be happy to have Holly as first choice with an understudy signed, not a Premier League drop down like Norris? I don't think we will even sign an understudy. I think Adam Prishbeck and Harry Wright will need to fight it out between themselves to be the number two. I think it did us more harm than good having two experienced goalkeepers that expected to play. And I, I don't think League One clubs can carry two goalkeepers, especially in the new normal. Ah, no normal, new normal. Someone do something with that. Someone That's the with a better ticket, um, yeah, wit. <laughs> Brilliant. No it's normal, no normal. Yeah. new normal. Rattled. Um, Richard, this is Andrew at Rum Fat Boy Rum. Um, Did a football show Friday for me, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, what new thing have you done during lockdown that you've never done before? <laughs> uh, bloody hell. It's an anagram of Alan. I didn't know. I can't even work it out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, there Joe's Nala. answer. That. The hell's Nala? <laughs> <laughs> it's a type of curry, isn't it? You cook it in a tagine. Back onto Maria. Yeah, Mikey's African cooking again. Yeah. I've 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 been really boring. I haven't done much. I've gone out for walks when I don't. I'm just as a thing to do, which I've not really done before. I'm bored, so I'm going to go for a walk. I've done some gardening. I'm going back to work on June the 1st, though, so it's all it's all over. I've, I've cleared my shed. I've got back into running, and I've had to be a full-time dad, which is as stressful as it sounds. Yeah, growing up. Craig? Yeah, tutoring, home tutoring. We've gone up for lots of walks as well, actually, Rich, a bit like yourself. Yeah, a lot of walks. Join the countryside. I've Getting hosted about my... 20 quizzes, I think, and partic- yeah. participated yeah. about 20 quizzes. Are you missing throwing tantrums in popular American Italian uh, microwave <laughs> restaurants, Richard? Yeah, I don't miss that. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be able to social distance in Frankie Money's in Oxford. Certainly yeah. not. There you go. Was it Oxford? Yeah, it was, wasn't it? Was. I can't even remember. Do you remember Who football? That's good, wasn't it? Yeah, vaguely. Yeah, people ask anything me. to kick off about people giving away my table in Oxford, Frankie and Benny's now. God, I miss that. <laughs> I didn't get anything to lose the last minute of Blackpool Sorry. away. I've started. Do you remember that? I, I, you know, I remember. I was at another match. Where was I? I remember the WhatsApp group exploding and my phone going beep, 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 beep a lot. Actually, I just seen um, Bielsa's Leeds beat Hull 
four nil, and it was actually quite beautiful as well. Um, uh, so I should have gone to Blackpool, really. I still get lots of stick from Ipswich fans. Um, right, I think um, unless there's anything else, how long have we done? God, we've done ages. So uh, I can, I, get can I do a question? Can I can I ask a question? Because certainly yeah. at the start of lockdown, I I to to my point about losing to Coventry, losing to Blackpool, was any of you missing Ipswich matches? I mean, they're, they're ignoring the bit before three o'clock and a bit afterwards. Is anyone missing being crap at football? Greg? Supporting Ipswich in 2019 and 2020? No, well, I think to, to my mind, the sort of season had sort of fizzled out anyway. Mm. Um, you know, we were we weren't on an upward curve, were we? You know, we were on a downward curve. We'd, we sort of got back into the rut of not particularly enjoying going to matches again. Um, and the summer was coming up, wasn't it? You know, we we're all going to spend a lot of time outside in the blazing hot weather and stuff. So I think I'd already sort of partially switched off for the season anyway so i can't say i've i've really missed it at all joe 100 points 100 goals yeah well it, it just feels like the close season at the moment doesn't it the, we- the weather's nice there's no other i know the bundesliga is, is now back but there's no other real football on so that it's not like there's premiership and championship football on every week so you're, you're missing it in that respect it just it just feels like the close season i think once the premiership and the championship is back and premier league the, premier league sorry um, Barclays man over there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my cannon. Uh, but um, it, it it just doesn't feel like the football season's going. It feels like we're waiting for pre-season, but we are in, in effect. But it's just going to be a very long way. And it's just the only disappointing thing is that I think the COVID has <laughs> sort of saved Paul Lambert's job. My Rich, my two biggest expenses are petrol and football tickets. So so what are you rolling, buying now? Rolling what are you spending in the money on. What am I buying? Um, well, we're going to do up the... Mark, you're going to buy Mark Fisher's shirt there. off of Joe. <laughs> <laughs> I can't afford Joe's um, wardrobe habits, I'm afraid. No. Um, right. Lovely. Um, I think we're just about there. If you've got any thoughts on uh, anything we've discussed, um, particularly the contracts and uh, what Craig was raising about what will the squad look like or um, whether you think there's even anything in that, given the mystic... Um, predictions we've made on not even knowing when a league will start, what it will look like, whether we'll get uh, dead rubbers in respects of teams who can't even afford to put 11 experienced professionals out or, God, we could see anything. I'm going off on a big ramble. Hey, might be able to get some cheap out of contract players and get a team anyway, but certainly a very interesting landscape. Um, Craig, last word from you. Stay alert, everyone. (laughs) Like like Guion Edwards at the back post with a big Colby Bishop coming behind him. Um, uh, Joe, last word from you. Enjoy the beach. <laughs> Bright Lindsay's nice. I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> Richard, keep away from the mayor. Um, no, don't let. Uh, that, that's not my last words. Um, uh, keep keep an eye. Don't on, let the bastards uh, grind you down. <laughs> keep an eye on our feed next week. This about this time next week, we've got one more surprise, haven't we? Yeah. One little surprise. So yeah. Well, it's not, as, it's not as big. <laughs> ben, you're, are you crying? <laughs> yeah. I've got I a little miniature up. bottle of red wine because I tried to. I I went up to something stone eight at the start of the lockdown. So I I think I put six pounds on. And does that mean I've now lost eight to get down? So I'm only allowed little little bottles of wine. Well, I've seen some adult beverages during this podcast actually so um i don't feel so guilty um professionalism is and that is